We're going to finish our How to Quilt series, and Dion stops here today to show us how to assemble our box and how to grow and lay out our quilt. So welcome back, Dion. Great. Thank you. Well, I'm excited to finish our quilt because we've worked on all these blocks. We've got them all here. Now so we have nine blocks, and the next thing to do is to make sure that they're all the same size. Um, we've done all the math, we've put them all together, and unless you've trimmed them already, then we want to take a minute and just make sure that they'll all fit together. And so we'll just, sometimes it's just a matter of... Just making sure each is nine and a half right. inches. And sometimes that can make all the difference. So we'll trim them all and then we'll lay them out and get ready to sew them together. All right. And with this, we have a tutorial for the, how to make this UFO to go. But what's great about it is we can lay out. We can our lay it box. out, switch it out, put it away if we need to, and then keep working on it until we like how our design looks. Okay, so we have some orange blocks. We've got some with blue green in it. Why don't we put the stars on the center and the outside, and the alternate blocks kind of in between. We can just play with it and see what we like. See what looks balanced to your eye. See if that flows. It's a little heavy in there. Maybe we'll t trade Do the that one. Mm -hmm. Get it to the point where you you stand that back nice. and you look at it and you get used to it and see if you <laughs> like it. Right. Okay. So this could be sewn together just as it is, as the center of a of a of a quilt. Add a simple border to it, and you've got a nice little table topper or a little wall hanging. Can you have an example of that? I do. Of course, not the same colors, but we get to see what it looks like if you finished it like this. And this would be great as, as a wall hanging or in the center of your yeah. table. So the blocks are sewn together, nothing in between the blocks, just a simple couple of borders on the outside. Nice. To grow it a little bit. Looks great. Then here's what happens if you add a little bit of sashing in between the blocks to separate that design. Creates a little picture frame. I like that. Kind of allows your eye to rest a little bit with this stop border and kind of focus on, on the blocks themselves rather than just looking at an all over patchwork. That's great. And again, a nice wall hanging or something to throw. Oh yeah, baby, baby quilt. quilt. Good size. Something for to baby throw quilt. over the couch. And this one shows adding a few extra blocks. Hold this up. Oh, there we go. Love these bright colors. Yeah, that looks great. So this one used all the nine blocks that we made in the series, and a few extra of the nine patches, and then these alternate blocks. Can you tell which is my very favorite block to make? <laughs> this quarter square triangle. I really yeah. love that unit. And then to grow it even further, um, wider borders. And this is a fun way to focus, to use the, the Riley Blake stripe. And there's usually and always and a stripe. I like that you did the mitered border on this quilt. Right. It's beautiful. We have a tutorial for that also. Very nice. So that actually grew the quilt to about a 64-inch square, a really nice lap size quilt or something to put over the bed. So there's some ideas. And now we get to decide what how big you want to grow this. your quilt and what you'd like to do with it. Well, let's talk about options. OK. So, so option one is just a table topper size, a little small quilt, just by sewing them together and adding a border. Okay. Does that appeal to you, or do you want to? Let's, let's grow our quilt. Let's okay. make it a little bigger. Okay, so we'll stack up our blocks and give ourselves a little bit more room. And I like to just kind of stack them in an order so that when we lay them out next time, we'll know, exactly what we'll know what our eye liked the best. Right, okay. So move this out of the way. Great. Okay, so the simple thing is, is to add a strip of sashing in between. So let's lay that out. We'll lay out with the sashing and see where to go from there. So you want to lay them all out again? Yeah. Okay. 
so well. And this, you're learning how to create your own pattern. A lot of times I will just buy a pattern and follow it, but if you want to be creative and create, get your own quilt, have your own design, then you can make it truly your own by doing this method. So the way to put it together is to sew a strip in between each row. And do you want to add and some more? And these are called the sashing. Mm -hmm. And then we've got posts. Right. For this one, it's actually easier if you sew this row together and sew this row together. And then you have a place, once your seams are done, you have a place to alternate your seams and kind of lock it into that row right there. So, again, you're going to sew each piece. Then you've got right. your row. Right, so each row. Then you're going to sew mm -hmm. this row. Then you're going to sew this row. And, and then, then you start assembling. Then add your rows together. And then on the outside of it, we'll add long strips of the sashing. Or it could be a different print out here. Say a stripe here. And then you go around. You're going to go around yeah, with this. I think so. So you would actually add another one. We'd on add probably side. a long strip of the of the orange so that we could kind of frame each of the blocks. And that would serve as our inner border also. And I like the way this, this looks, because each of your quilt blocks you worked on, you spent time as shown as an individual, they don't all run right. together. Right, kind like of focuses that. on each block. And these little posts in between will help bring the color all, all the way around together. it. Mm -hmm. So you can see how we're assembling our quilt and making sure before we even make our first stitch that we like our design. We like what's going on. Here's some more. OK, and then, then we can decide how how much larger we want to grow it by adding more borders that tie it all together. Kind of like the look of this, the way it's going. Especially with these, this is a cute plaid on the outside. Isn't that sweet? And that just ties it all in. And you've got all the colors on your border. I like bringing a fun fabric on the outside to pull your quilt That's together. right. And usually when you're selecting colors for your quilt in the first place, then you find a focus fabric that you love. Something that has a lot of color to it to use for your outer border, at least that's what I do. And then use those within the quilt. And sometimes you like the quilt alone with even, not even using the borders. But that was your, your inspiration to start with. So, so this is a beautiful option. Yeah, this is a great way um, to make a nice lap size quilt or baby quilt or throw one more. And I like the look of it. But there's still, um, even using just these nine blocks is a way to grow it even more without adding extra borders. And that is to put the squares on point, or in other words, to put them on a diamond. So here's one idea. And to let's clear it off, and then we'll talk Kay. about putting a um, quilt blocks on point. And also, you could add your quarter square triangles and make more blocks like you did sure, on Sure, or quilt. nine patch, or any of them that you like. In fact, when you make a sampler, the idea is to test out you know, some of the blocks and see what you like. This one just happens to be one of my favorites. And I can see a whole quilt made with just this and block. I've seen a lot of quilts made out of just that block, which are beautiful. OK, show us how you make this quilt okay. on point. OK, so before we start, then we are going to need to add some more fabrics to it I'll grab our um, in between and around the outside, triangles around the outside to frame it. And that takes about 7 eighths of a yard more of fabric. fabric. So we'll want. Um, the same size square to put in between them. And then we'll want corner triangles to go on the outside corners 
and we'll, we'll want side sashing triangles to go on those too. Because when you turn it on point, you've got extra you've space. Got, right, big so triangles that you need to fill. So we're going to fill in the space with our filler border fabric, which will look nice. It will, and uh, this has so much color, so much design to it that you don't really need to do much more. Okay, so our corner triangles are a seven and a quarter inch square, and we'll cut it in half diagonally. And okay, the, the, or is it kind of the problem with putting a quilt on point is that um, that puts all of the the um, the quilts kind of on a bias. And so what you, your goal is with these setting and sashing corners and side triangles is to have the bias be on the inside of the quilt and the straight grain along the outside of the quilt. So two seven and a quarter inch squares and that will make all the corners for okay. our setting. And then and the math is um, you divide the finished block size by the square root and add seam allowances. And I keep a little chart of that in my quilter's Bible. So, and this is a 14 and a quarter inch square, two of them. Mm -hmm. And what we'll do with this one is, because they're going on the inside, we want the outside edges to be the straight of grain. And so all the bias edges are on the inside of the quilt, so it will lie flat. And so, so we you're going to cut this twice. We take our, right, so we're going to cut it in half twice. We take our finished size, which is nine inches, and then multiply that by the square root, and then add two seam allowance um, measurements for two diagonal cuts. And it came up to 14 and a quarter inches. And like I say, I have a chart, so I don't have to remember all that. <laughs> Okay, that so that like gives a lot of math for me. <laughs> you know, the <laughs> Mr. Ricks in that math class. When am I ever going to use algebra, Mr. Ricks? So use and it here every you day. Are using it in quilting. In quilting. Okay, so let's clear this off. We'll set our blocks out. We'll set our alternate blocks in between and our sashing corner triangles, and just see how big this quilt can get. So what's the best way to put so these in the mm -hmm. middle? Yeah. Okay. Right in between. I think these will look nice. And we'll kind of lay it out the same way and we can that do we did. Sashing. And you could do these on point without sashing. But you could. it would look so much better with the yeah, sashing. Yeah, we can add all this sashing in between. So we'll kind of lay it out just like we did with the stars on the corners. If people like puzzles, they've got to <laughs> like quilting. Because it's like a big puzzle that you can make and create. Good point. We may need some more room here, especially if you want to yeah, add. Scoot this off. If you want to add sashing in between, this thing can really grow. <laughs> and again, an easy way to make give yourself a bigger quilt with the same quilt blocks that we've used before, just adding a few simple blocks. Right, and look at what we're learning larger. along the way. What a sampler is such a good beginning quilt. Just to try out and test out what you like to do, how you can be creative. Oh, and look how much we can grow it even further by adding this sashing in between it. Here, I'll trade just Yes, spots. this can be quite large. So it wouldn't take much to make this into a, a full-size quilt. And if you added a you bunch could of make borders, more blocks, it could right. be, you could make it into a queen-size quilt really, really easily. Probably just double the amount of blocks that you make. Add another row or two. So this is really coming together it's nicely. It's really growing, and you might want to use a bed to spread it out on, or even the living a room floor, floor, or a big space where you can get a bird's eye view of the pattern going on. Or a nice big wall. Start putting the posts in. Now I love this contrast of fabric on the posts. That kind of brings it and all together, And it's good to have, 
you know, usually for your sashing, you want like a solid color for your eyes to rest, for it not to be too busy. A little stop border for you. But it's nice to have a little pop of color. That looks nice, doesn't it? And then we'll probably bind it in the either the, the blue green or the outside. And the now orange you're, you're would be showing cute. borders. Now yeah. you can see how important it is to have that straight edge, outside edge. So right. even it though it's on it. point, mm -hmm. your edges are straight, and that's what these blocks were for. Well, and the nice thing is that the grain line is straight all along the outsides of this. And so it's not going to distort and warp, um, and your borders won't wave as long as these outside edges are on the straight grain. This is looking great. Yeah, so we're going to finish up and then we can see our final layout so once I we've got all the sashing in. I take it you like this layout? I do. I, I like things on point. I think it adds uh -huh. an interesting element and I, I like putting quilts together on point. So we finished laying out our quilt. Look at this quilt. As much as we could. We couldn't do the outside yeah. borders because our table's not big enough. <laughs> Need a bigger space. That's but wow, sure. isn't this beautiful? It grew from 27 inch square mm -hmm. to almost, well, it'll probably be over 60 inches by the time we finish. A beautiful big quilt. Should we talk about how to sew it together? Yes, let's talk okay. about it because it's so a the borders, different. We like to sew the borders together. Because we're going to do a mitered border. Do a miter so a that that corner can join on this Way to finish a quilt. Stripe. Yes. So we won't worry about that right now. But what we'll do is leave off the, the outside little corners. Okay. And then we'll treat each one of these rows separately. So in other words, we'll sew, and we'll not sew this to and this. Not this. This right. is separate. We'll sew so we're this row. So we're going to sew in a line, but it's right. going on the diagonal. Exactly. So we'll sash in between these blocks. We'll this sash be this row together. Row. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this row this here. Row. And so this once we get row. each row together, then we can put the rows together. So we'll do row, then you sew your sashing row until you get your whole quilt. Assembled. Right. And once they're done, then you add the last triangle corner. Okay. And then you add your miter borders all at the same time. And again, we have a great tutorial on how to mm -hmm. do that. So, well, this is going to be a truly beautiful quilt. So, thank you, Dion. You've given you. us excellent instruction on how to assemble these quilt blocks, how to add our sashing and our borders to grow our quilt, how to put them on point. Right. This is just going to be a terrific size and a beautiful quilt. Love these fabrics. It's been really a lot of fun to hang out at your sewing room with you. And you've learned all the techniques that you need from this point on to piece um, beautiful quilts. And design your own quilts in right. your, own, your very own way. You don't even need a pattern. You can create your own quilting design. Right. Now, when you go to put this together, if you don't have time to do the whole thing in one sitting, I'd take a picture of it just so you can have you know, the, that as a base to go back to. And make sure you do it just how you had right. it laid out initially. Great tip. Great tip. So thank you. Thank you.